One of the things that makes the sport of mixed martial arts so great is the people and the personalities involved. Sometimes we get to see athletes stripped bare, wearing their hearts on their sleeves and putting everything on the line. Other times we see a fabrication of personality used to simply sell a fight. But it doesn't matter if you're being yourself or not. Some heroes are hated. Sounds like I something a nerd or a virgin would do. And some villains are loved. Guy walks around with a fake belt. That's insane! I would never do that! Oh, boo! Oh, he went too far with the fake bell. And that's what we find ourselves today, looking at those fighters that behaved in ways that you might think would make people hate them, but were instead completely beloved by the fans. Father's Day is just around the corner, and one thing's for sure, dads already have enough ties, tools, and baggy tees. This year, why not give your dad, father figure, mentor, or loved one the gift of looking good with True Classic. Known for making premium everyday essentials more affordable than ever, stress less this year with 25% off at trueclassic.com and the code MMAOP. We know dads come in all shapes and sizes, but one thing True Classic gets right is their fitted t-shirts, which are built with everybody in mind. These tees are ultra soft, fitted in the arms and tailored in the shoulders with just enough room where you need it. They're so committed to their shirts fitting right that they even have a 100% risk-free guarantee and easy returns, so you can feel as good gifting as they feel wearing it. But it doesn't stop there. From their latest comfort jeans and chinos to no-ride boxer briefs, True Classic is fast becoming the one-stop shop for all your wardrobe needs bringing that same dedication to fit and feel to everything else you need to get dressed. True Classic is hooking you guys up with an exclusive deal to help you get ahead on gifting. Sounds pretty good. Well, for a limited time only, you can get 25% off if you head to trueclassic.com and use the code MMAOP. That's 25% off when you use the code MMAOP plus free shipping on orders over $100. I'm Balian from MMA On Point. And as always, before we get started, huge shout out to our Hall of Fame channel members for supporting us. And these are MMA's 10 biggest anti-heroes. Number 10, Joanna Champion. The MMA community's first impressions of the Polish Muay Thai champion were vastly different from her final form as the Boogie Woman. She was a quiet, unassuming newcomer with the questions mostly being about how to pronounce her name. Just pronounce your name exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. It's typical uh, Polish Jędrzejczyk. Uh, but once she won the belt, she slowly started to morph into Joanna Champion, and this version didn't even try and play nice. I'll be honest, did you know who Valerie Letourneau was when you were offered this fight? Uh, yeah, I watched I watched her fight with Marina Moros. That's all. Okay. I, honestly, I got uh, got got bored. Yeah, did yeah. I say right? Yeah, I got bored. I think after after this fight, she gonna retire. Retire. Yeah. I'm too good for all of them, you know. And after dismantling a few contenders, she took her anti-hero behavior to another level. She said some truly ominous things to Claudia on The Ultimate Fighter. Come, Come down. down what? More respect to the champion. I'm gonna put you in shame. Do it. No, Do I'm gonna it. wait. Do and it. And enjoy it slowly. Do it. Do it. Slowly, Do day it. by day. You want me to split on your yes, face or punch do it. you? And like a true Batman villain, she even went after her opponent's mental health problems. This fight could be a great uh, PSA announcement for, you know, mental health awareness. I think that, uh, I think I'm a champion for that. You know what? You are not stronger mentally. You are mentally unstable and you are broken already and I will break you in the fight. This, this is what I'm expecting, but I think this press conference is a little bit too much. You cannot be the champion because you just can't do this. You can't deal with the media. You cannot deal with the pressure. It's too much for you. But despite all of her villainous behavior and threats of Polish justice, she was completely embraced by the MMA community because, well, she was a badass, basically. She was delivering violence and mixed martial arts on another level and single-handedly pretty much built the 115 pound division, leaving a trail of dismantled competition behind her. Number nine, Kevin Holland. Not many people on this list have been actual heroes and gone out of their way to stop robberies and punish criminals, but I guess the question is, is Kevin Holland a hero we deserve? At face value, Kevin is a nice guy. Actually, to be honest, I think he is just a nice guy, really. But recently, he's done some things that don't exactly fall in line with UFC company man hero type behavior. <laughs> So when, when Holland left the press conference that day, I told the security guys I want more security on him. Did you know what he did? He ran out the back and left by himself because he doesn't want security. Because you need me. You need me to save you! I mean, at UFC 279, the entire pre-fight press conference had to be cancelled. And well, Kevin Holland seemed to be the main instigator. Yeah, this ain't gonna happen. I apologize, everybody. I am in very weird 
water share. This has never happened in the history of this company. So trust me when I tell you this is the right decision not to do this press conference right now. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I was just trying to tell everybody that what the fuck are you doing? What's going on? Stop. Everybody stop. But they were all so fired up. Kevin and I are actually really close, you know what I mean? And uh, he wasn't having it. And historically, you know, if there's one thing fans don't like, it's when fighters' actions start to mess with the fight card itself. You know, it's pretty villainous behavior, aside from, you know, also starting brawls backstage. But Kevin is still beloved by pretty much the entire fan base, basically because he'll do friendly yet hilarious trash talk during fights, will pretty much fight anyone, anytime, and has saved numerous cards by stepping in on short notice. And the obvious one decided to stand up with Wonderboy for four rounds, just for our entertainment. Number eight, Triple C. I could genuinely see Henry Cejudo on a throne, lording it over an empire, killing snakes and wearing a plush velvet crown. I'm looking good. I mean, let's be honest, beating Demetrius Johnson was one of the most impressive things that anyone has done in the sport. But not many people actually seem to care. I mean, Henry was pretty calm back then, especially compared to how he is now. You know, at the end of the day, it's all about, it, it's, it, it's enough talk, shit's done. It's time to fight, man, that's it. But he went from a plain black t-shirt to gold-tinted tracksuits. <laughs> And he did talk a little trash, but he was just really serious about it. Uh, all respect to the champ, but man, they're out there. You know, the, the, the Mexicans want to see blood and they want to see it come out of him. Several months later. Jose Aldo, I got a message for you. On May 9th, Triple C is going to be serving go. What the fuck happened? Yes, there were definitely some fans that weren't happy with the disrespect he was showing other fighters or with how hard he was trying to promote himself. Not exactly the selfless acts of a hero. But once everyone calmed down a bit, and especially after he returned from retirement, fans embraced him. The fight week against Aljamain Sterling, every time he popped his head up, he was met with cheers from the fans. <laughs> who, despite all the cringing, still enjoyed a bit of Triple C. Number seven, Dan Hardy. Some people from the get-go market themselves as a villain. I mean, if the giant red mohawk and pointy teeth mouthpiece wasn't enough of a giveaway, Dan Hardy literally went by the moniker The Outlaw. But pretty much like the hero from where he hails in Nottingham, he became much more of a Robin Hood-like character. The sheriff calls us outlaws. But I say we are free. And yeah, Dan was hated at first, but he totally embraced it and he pushed back against it. He even walked on stage wearing an I Hate Dan Hardy shirt. And Dan also likes to talk a little trash and get into the head of his opponent. Or why Matt Hughes? Well, you know, he's done great things in the sport, but people can't can't disconnect that from the fact that he's an asshole as a person. You know what I mean? I actually got Mike a bit of something so he didn't leave England empty-handed and just something to remember his journey by. Uh, I got him a, a runner-up trophy. So, just, you know, just so he didn't leave empty-handed. And uh, you were giving Carlos Condit some stick because he said he, he's, there was something wrong with his passport, but you weren't so sure about that. What was your theory? He tied his passport to the back of his car on the way to the uh, the, the airport, so when he got there, it would be all torn up and trashed. Um, and then he got there and they wouldn't let him on the plane, so he started to head back to New Mexico and Greg Jackson got a couple of heavies and took him back to the plane and threw him on it. That, that's my theory, but... I think you fired the first shot of the bow when you said, George St. Pierre is an athlete and I'm a fighter. That was you, right? Because I can just throw at him. I can give it 100% in every punch. And when one knocks him out, that's going to shit up a lot of people. And that's what's really going to excite me about it. <laughs> I, I, just, I just have different values to Josh Koscheck. I don't, I don't fake eye pokes or knees to the head and things like that. And I don't, I don't bitch and moan and, you know. Can we, can we, just, we just have no questions about my Sarah's weight. He's very, very <laughs> <laughs> And Dan could get pretty angry. I mean, we saw what his temper was like against Herb Dean. But despite his attempts to be the bad guy, he ended up being one of the more popular fighters in the UFC. After his loss to GSP, most people's hate turned to respect. Then he came and had a whole comeback arc that people got on board with. And after his turn to analyst and eventual commentator, he was being praised for his intelligence and ability to shed a positive light on the sport. Number six, Tito Ortiz. Okay, I think for some people these days, they look at Tito Ortiz and they see a somewhat confused old man still picking fights like he's Ric Flair in the 80s. You, my friend, have got to wrestle the man ah, with the golden spoon. <laughs> <laughs> and while most of his athletic ability has melted away, given the passing of time. How you doing, buddy? You with me? 
He's been competing since UFC 13 in 1997, okay? That's ridiculous. I mean, no one is still fighting from back then. Point is though, back in the day, whilst Tito became the fifth time defending UFC light heavyweight champion, not only was he pretty savage in his butcher-like style of elbow in your face in, but he played the villain pretty well. He had a celebration where he would literally dig the grave of his fallen opponent, had the Punishment Athletics clothing line. Sponsored by PunishmentClothing.com. So if you want some, get some. And don't forget, he was even trying to fight Dana White at one point, and even on his TV appearances, he was a guy you were supposed to be scared of. <laughs> but at the end of the day, his whole spiel was to disrespect his opponents and threaten to beat them up. Take you Words down talk and cheap, man, in but two fists would be nice and black. That TNT and dynamite's gonna explode <laughs> on your face, buddy. And he was certainly embraced by the fans. It wasn't until after his second loss to Chuck and then the four defeats that followed that the fans started to turn on him. And although what he says these days comes off as super corny, he's still trying to be the bad guy. And you know, even in his last Bellator fight, the crowd were absolutely going wild for him. Number five, Michael Bispin. I suppose you don't need to talk shit to sell fights, but it probably helps. You don't need to win one of the most controversial decisions of all time to be hated, but that definitely helps as well. And you don't need to spit at your opponent's corner. You know, Dana White once said to me, he says, you don't want to look like a dick on TV. Don't act like a dick on TV. You know, Mike Bisping started off hated by a lot of fans. And to be fair, I can see why he wasn't everyone's cup of tea. He often got pretty leery at stare downs and pointed and shouted in his opponent's face. His trash talk came across as arrogant or cocky. This is a press conference, by the way, Jorge. This is what you do. Just, I know it's your first time involved in something like this. Welcome to the big leagues. Um, after this, you'll be back to the undercard, believe me. Jorge is a, a relic. He's a throwback to the, the, uh, the beginning of mixed martial arts. I'm a complete mixed martial artist and I'll be showing him that on the night. I'm a fan of Shell Sonnen, but unfortunately, just lately, he's starting to look like a court jester as opposed to a fighter. And Saturday night, I'm going to make him look like the fool that he's become. But even when he was talking badly about his opponent, he was making people laugh. He was fighting a part-time baker at the weekends that dabbled in martial arts, you know, that was a cage fighter that wore a tap-out t-shirt. But by the time he beat Anderson Silva and then knocked out Luke Rockhold, he was truly beloved by the fan base. And his stint as a commentator has only further cemented that. Number four, Chael Sonnen. I don't think the lines of people's champion and villainous rogue have ever been more blurred than with Chael Sonnen. I'm not a martial artist, I am a gangster from West Lynn, Oregon and I win fights with these and I make no goddamn apology. Are we the baddies? <laughs> he decided to pick up his name badge one day and simply write on it, the bad guy, and adopted the persona of the trash-talking, unbeatable muscle man. Undefeated and undisputed. <laughs> well, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Silva the champ? Yeah, I will correct you. You are wrong. Chael's done everything a classic villain should do. Told his foe they absolutely suck. Gotta make that clear, of course. You all know the one about the Nogueras and the carrot. There was a bus that pulled up to a red light and Little Nog tried to feed it a carrot while Big Nog was petting it. He thought it was a horse. That happened. <laughs> Now that happened. <laughs> and yeah, he did steroids and he admitted it. And guess what? He doesn't even care. Well, I, I don't know if anybody's failed more drug tests than me, but the other side of it is I don't know if anybody's gotten away with more drugs than me, right? I mean, they, they got me over like seven substances, but I was on at least 17. They're all that good. <laughs> well, they go around and brag. Uh, He's even got that ice cold stare locked down. That's it? That's all you're giving me? just doesn't give a shit, mate. I mean, he just plays into his own character so well. The most dangerous man in the history of time before time was even created. Wait, wasn't that supposed to be Thanos? And I can prove it. It's called YouTube. Either way, despite the fact that he was trying his best to besmirch, humiliate, and intimidate, instead he was met with cheers and given cult status within the community and is probably one of the most beloved characters to have ever graced the sport. I'm walking out. I appreciate the memories. And goodbye. Number three, Shinya Aoki. I think if your first martial arts trainer beat you up every time you didn't win, you'd be competitive as well. And ever since he first started competing, he went all out offense in pursuit of the submission. Now an aggressive style like that is pretty intimidating. He's not playing some enlightened Jedi use the force for defense crap. He's going after people. I mean, how many limbs did he break in his career? Hironaka, Keith Wizanuski, Hirota. I mean, I'm sure there are a few more along the way. But it wasn't just Shinya's fighting style that made him pretty evil. It was also 
also his antics outside the cage. He was more than happy to flip off his opponent or the camera when he got a chance, traded trash talk at press conferences, and often in fights carried himself like this was all just a bit too easy for him. But despite the MMA media publishing what he did to Hirota as the dirtiest thing in the history of the sport, he emerged as another bad boy. And a lot of fans agreed, but that was back then. And now, looking back, it's viewed as a classic Giga Chad moment from the era of Japanese MMA. I mean, it's a Shinya Aoki fight. It's like asking people if they care that Deadpool goes around coup de gras people. The answer is no. They know what they signed up. Number two, Rampage Jackson. Some heroes wear capes or give awe-inspiring speeches to rally the destitute in their time of need. Running around the desert together in Las Vegas, looking for strippers and cocaine. I make a toast. Oh, what? What do you got there? Oh, oh, yeah. But one thing heroes don't normally do is wear massive bike chains around their neck and howl at the moon, unless you're Van Helsing, I guess. Sexuality. Or Rampage Jackson, who was a hero to people. He acted tough, fought tough, was completely embraced by the fans who loved his all action style. Also, he was pretty hilarious. I mean, that, that definitely helped. So, on one thing I eat wet, it's my cereal. Just don't touch my nipples. All right. You want to go up with the shirt? Just don't touch my nipples. I don't want to. I'll try not to. Fucking douse the shit out of you. What the I, fuck you doing here? It's not Christmas yet. You can do this, you got. <laughs> Even after knocking out Chuck Liddell, road rampages, excuses for missing weight and losses, contract disputes, Jackson has ended his MMA career as a legend and is still very much loved by the fan base. Most of our fans are, are dudes, so who wants to be famous with a bunch of dudes? You know what I'm saying? I would rather be somebody like, you know, famous like Chris Brown or Justin Bieber have a bunch of chicks that, that dig you, you know what I'm saying? Number one, the Diaz brothers. Nick and Nate Diaz are just like that TV show every parent didn't want you to watch in the early 2000s. But it just had all the most fun stuff on it. Smoking weed, middle fingers, street fights, nunchucks. Let's go, let's go. Boom, boom, boom. And they'll be like, you know. If you had the Diaz Brothers show on VHS, they would have hidden that shit in their closet. Generally, their attitude to the sport has always been anti-media, anti-promotion, kill or be killed. This is the fight game. They ain't standing up GSP style, putting on their best face to represent MMA in the best light possible. I'm like, y'all can get knocked the fuck out. They want you to know the harsh realities of fighter <laughs> pay. Is this the money channel? The f <laughs> training and the fact, of course, you know, that... Uh, all you motherfuckers, all you on steroids. I already know that. All on steroids. I can definitely say that fighting backstage and at events, not showing up to press conferences and flipping off nearly every opponent is not the kind of thing you'd see Captain America do. You know, you may not be a threat, but you better stop pretending to be a hero. Fuck your own team, how about that? But none of that has stopped them from being adored by fans as the true epitome of what it means to be an anti-hero in the sport of mixed martial arts. As always as well, we have the superhero Ben Rosette who's provided that epic MMA on point intro theme. Thanks, Ben. There's more of his stuff on Spotify if you want to see it. Better than heroes, though, are the MMA on point channel champions. They support the channel and have been getting access to exclusive content, channel badges, and more. If you want to join them, click the button below. Make sure you check us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. Really helps us out. And hit subscribe if you want to be notified when we drop more vids. I've been Balian. I could do this all day.